If there's something weird and it don't look good, who are you gonna call? Well, I wouldn't recommend these Ghostbusters. The power of pain compels you! <laughs> so the movie has been out for a while now and it already has been confirmed that there won't be a sequel. Thank heavens. So let's get started with the review. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, oh. Did you want to? Sorry. I'll let you. I'll let you. Next time. My anticipation for this movie was very, very low, and I'm saying that as a big Ghostbusters fan and also as a little sexist. Nah, I'm just kidding. But from the very first news about rebooting this franchise, it never got me intrigued because I always thought the idea was rather baffling. Ghostbusters wasn't primarily a great movie because of the ghosts, it was a great movie because of its characters, its portrayals of Murray and co and its screenplay. It was well written, had likable and almost relatable characters and almost all the lines with their dry humor are quotable to this day. And I don't find it to be unfair to compare the new one to the original because it has the exact same title. It's not like the old one has the most complex, most genius story ever, but when you look closer you will see that the love story and the end of the world aspect are put together quite nicely. Well actually you don't have to look that close to get that, but you don't have to look that close at the new one to recognize how cheaply and sloppy it's put together. Instead of dropping that love possession angle completely and going for something new, they kind of rehash it in the yeah in the cheapest way by letting Kristen Wiig's character stare at Hemsworth many times until he gets possessed too in the end. It doesn't amount to anything and it's just a bad reminder of what worked so much better in the original. But I'm sorry now I'm already in the middle of it all. So let's go back. Going into the movie I wasn't so much looking forward to having a great time because the trailers didn't do much for me but I was rather curious to see what exactly they did with the material. Only to find out that they didn't do much with it at all. Nothing very creative at least. The movie starts very similar to the original with the first appearance of a ghost and I actually like the colorful design of it. We are then introduced to Kristen Wiig's character who is the lead. It's good that they don't try to simply copy the character traits from the original cast and they even kind of introduce a friendship between Wick and McCarthy. There seemed to be an arc here and I like that, but in the end it doesn't go anywhere as it is almost dropped completely later on. Normally I really like Kristen Wick. Man, I think she's the best part of Zoolander too and I thought she was kind of nice in Ghostbusters. At least in the first half because there are some really weak moments with her too. I'm not the biggest fan of Melissa McCarthy, but I liked her a lot in Spy and she's okay here. Leslie Jones and Kate McKinnon were totally new to me and while I really enjoyed Leslie Jones, I absolutely loathe the performance of McKinnon. She's playing the crazy one and there's actually no real character here. Much of the comedic stuff on screen seemed to be improvised and McKinnon is constantly goofing around. It never adds up to a consistent movie. The comedic approach is completely different from the original and that's okay, but I didn't find it to be very fitting to the Ghostbusters concept. Now it just seems to be more like a loud, incredible, juvenile fantasy comedy by the numbers. <laughs> Where the original one had an awesome, creepy atmosphere to it as well, the eerie soundtrack by Elmer Bernstein alone and also a wonderful New York flavor too, but maybe that's the nostalgia talking a little bit. With this one it's all very in your face the whole time. There are no ideas in the screenplay and the same goes for the bland cinematography, the generic music or the gags as well. But even without comparing it to the original it's a fairly unambitious movie. At first I thought the story which involves an outsider who tries to open ghost portals all over New York to get his revenge could be interesting, but it's really not. Neil Casey can shine at all and once again he as an actor is completely dropped in the finale. There are many, many more problems with the movie which I can only address briefly here. There is no coherent logic to the world in the movie. It's much more a cartoon with no real characters. Everyone seems to just go for it telling whatever supposedly funny quip come to mind. The team has no real goal or the goal they might have like rebuilding the friendship 
or showing their superiors they can do it is getting dropped in favor of a finale that's really, really bad. I mean, like, really, really bad. Basically, the last 20 minutes of the movie feel like your typical CGI green screen shit fest with our four Ghostbusters just busting ghosts in the coolest way. They just get really badass and it's neither funny nor great to look at. It looks super cheesy and where the original had that New York Central Park feeling to it and the cool atmospheric set of that skyscraper rooftop, this looks like it was all shot in front of a green screen. And one last thing, they went for a complete reboot of the franchise when they could have easily spun a story that takes place after the events of the first two movies and they incorporate almost the entire remaining cast from the past and the Bill Murray cameo was one of the absolute worst elements of the movie for some reason. Not because of Bill Murray, even though he doesn't do that much, but because what his little scene tells us about our protagonist. I don't want to spoil it, but well, I think at this point, <laughs> but I was baffled and face palming. Ghostbusters is a mediocre movie, it's not terrible, but for me it's not good or even worth watching either. Director Paul Feig and the actors involved did great jobs in the past, but this one isn't one of them. The story goes nowhere, the approach has no wit or clever ideas to it, the characters and the tone are all over the place and the finale is real wrath of god type stuff fire and brimstone 40 years of darkness earthquakes volcanoes dogs and cats living together there are some laughs for sure but the screenplay is very weak and the movie totally forgettable comedies are hard to make and the fact that the original ghostbusters worked as amazing as it did is owed to many different factors which all came together perfectly at a specific time unfortunately Today was not the right time for another great comedy, especially not for one that feels so lazy and forced and has almost zero cool new ideas. And so in the end, I give Ghostbusters 4.5 out of 10. Oh, oh good, okay. thanks. Alright, that's it. Like always, please tell me in the comments below what you think about the new Ghostbusters movie. And in case you're wondering why I do a Ghostbusters review, even the movie has been out for so long, my PC was broken and now I'm catching up with all the movies I saw. So stay tuned, there are more movie reviews of rather old titles by now coming in the next days. And next Thursday there will be The Magnificent Seven. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like.